Continue with this particular story. We've got a legal analyst, advocate uh, Zola Machavu. He joins us now just to give us uh, what he thought um, in terms of the judgment today. Mr. Machavu, thank you very much for your time here on ENC. And now, of course, this has an immediate implication on her immediate release from custody, right? That's quite obvious. But what kind of immediate implications does this have for the trial um, that she faces? Um, good afternoon, Masifo. Good afternoon to the viewers out there. Firstly, I do not answer to the <laughs> title of advocate. Uh, I'm all right with Mr. Majavu. I'm a senior legal practitioner and uh, not an analyst. But having said that, thank you for the opportunity. Firstly, it has no immediate bearing on the criminal trial that is impending. In fact, my view is that uh, this application was um, with respect an exercise in futility because at best had she been successful. Think about it practically, what was gonna happen? Was she going to have to be sent back to Tanzania? Does that necessarily mean that the charges that she's facing in the country are of no consequence? Clearly the answers to those questions are in the negative. So in terms of her immediate release, it simply means that uh, she stays in custody until she decides to proceed with a formal bail application it may well be there that if she discharges the owners that rests upon her, then she may be admitted to bail. Other than that, she stays in custody until the next uh, court appearance. What are her options available to her? She may possibly take this matter on appeal if she feels so, so aggrieved or if she is so advised. Mm -hmm. But once again, the impact or the full import of what the outcome would be is not going to change the fact that she still has charges to face. Mm. which charges are unrelated to the manner in which she may have been deported or extradited. Assuming mm. that she was brought into the country through unlawful means, she may have a civil remedy that she has to pursue in the civil court. But it cannot necessarily mean that if the court were to find that she was brought into the country unlawfully, she then walks off scot free. The two yeah. processes are simply not intertwined. So I guess my question is about whether or not the prosecutor, uh, when the case uh, becomes a trial in the High Court, doesn't this application by Dr. Makudumana give the prosecution uh, more leg in terms of them arguing that she had this type of application, uh, you know, going against her arrest as if she didn't do anything wrong, knowing that she was wanted in this country uh, for the crimes that she's facing? Not necessarily she was entitled to bring this application. What may happen is, depending on what it is that she said under oath in her support team or in her founding affidavit, to the extent that those have a bearing in the crimes with which she stands accused, that may well work against her because it would have been a statement that she would have made under oath. But as far as the criminal proceedings are concerned, she is still presumed innocent until pronounced guilty. And in that instance, it is the state that bears the onus of proving her guilt beyond reasonable doubt. It will not in and of itself be used against her simply because she brought an application. And remember, we don't know whether she may appeal and whether she may be successful on appeal. And if that happens, chances are the appeal would be heard before the actual criminal trial itself. So mm -hmm. I do not see how, you know, um, she can go to town about it. I also don't see how the state would necessarily make much of a meal about it, other than to say that they did secure a, a victory and uh, there may be certain things that she said in affidavit that may come back to haunt her. But quite frankly, it is of no moment. I personally believe that the judgment was correct, even though the judge did make observations about the manner in which she yeah. was brought into the country. But I think that was also being said by a suggestion that she also consented. Mm. So to the extent that there was an unlawful part or some coercion uh, at the instance of those who brought her in the country, that seems to have been militated against by her own consent. But I think there's a lot to be said about how this was arranged. I think it's a lesson to the authorities themselves that they should also not be over hasty and satisfy public opinion in how they do some of the work that they do because that may possibly undermine the good work that they do. But all of these processes are governed by certain legal instruments. And I think we will all do well by respecting those applicable instruments. But I don't take anything away from the the NPA, they did well. And uh, and, and I think uh, the counsel for uh, for Dr. Uh, Magudumana 
also did raise some weighty issues that I think engaged the judge's attention. And, and you can see that in some of the observations that he is making. But the fact of the matter is they have lost and they have lost with cost. If there was any victory that they scored, they would not have been marked it with, a, with an adverse post order. But uh, it's still early days. She still has quite a number of uh, options available to her. Whether or not they're worth it, I, I wouldn't know. And I'm sure her legal team is better placed. Mm, and I mean, uh, that's exactly what the point that I was going to come to, that at the end of the day, the decision that the court made today seems to have been uh, mostly derived, obviously other issues as well, but mostly derived by the fact that she gave consent. Yes, and, and if that is the case, you, you, you can't then understand why she will come back and moan about the manner in which she was transported back into, into the country, knowing full well that there's a slew of charges uh, that are awaiting her. And, and one is not suggesting for a second that uh, she is guilty. We must also be very careful not to hype up public sentiment, because mm -hmm. in a court of law, the law works on, on the law and the facts and how you apply the one to, to the other. But I, I quite frankly do not see how she was hoping to succeed in instances where she consented to that manner of, of, of her being brought back into the country. But like I say, maybe she may have better luck on appeal. But yeah. quite frankly, the criminal case is unaffected by this. At best, she would have perhaps used the outcome of this case in an application for bail. If you mm. think about it, the reason why she has not persisted with her with the bail application it was because she was hedging her bets on the outcome of this particular case. The court you can rest assured illegal. that if she had, exactly, if, if mm. she had succeeded, perhaps she could have made much, you know, to do about the fact that the mode of her being transported back into the country was found to be unlawful. It mm. would have been one of those factors that would have weighed heavily and favorably towards her in a bail application in which she bears the onus of proving that it is in the interest of justice that she be admitted to bail. But so I think that stratagem has failed. Mm, and, I, and I always wondered how it would work, because if the court today, if the High Court in Bloemfontein today said her arrest was indeed illegal, would it mean she still has to apply for bail? Doesn't that mean she immediately leaves prison? No, she would still re okay. remember what was before the judge, Judge Lobsha, was mm. whether or not she was arrested properly. But if the yes. court had found that, uh, you know, there was something amiss about how she was arrested, it mm. would not automatically mean to say that it erases the charges that are the reason why she's arrested in the first place. Those charges yeah. still remain, and that was not an issue before Judge Lobsha. So it would at best have assisted her in discharging the owners resting upon her in a bail application that she is still to bring if she mm. is so inclined and she may wake up tomorrow and decide this notwithstanding i believe mm. that i do have reasons that may persuade a presiding officer that i am a candidate to be admitted to bail and again if she does that we should not be offended by mm. her gumption in wanting to exercise the rights available to her right. she's a constitutional subject and whether we like what she does or not she is entitled to ventilate this in a court of law even mm. if it is uh, to her own peril. But yeah, I, I think we must just chill as a society and allow the rule of law to unfold. I can understand the anger from a mm. public sentiment point of view, but that's not how the law works. All right. Well, I guess uh, it's because we have a South Africa with very despondent uh, citizens because of what we've been through in the last couple of years. Thank you so much uh, for speaking to us. That is Senior Legal Practitioner Zola Majavu speaking to us there. If you've just joined us, the breaking news is that Dr. Nandi Pamagudumana's application to have her arrest deemed illegal has been dismissed with cost in the High Court in Bloemfontein. Let's